Back at the 2010 Pat Cotisol International Conference, speaking with Lisa. Uh, can you tell us first who you are, what you do here? Sure. Um, my full name is Lisa Levine. I teach at Tsungshul University here in Seoul. Um, I teach undergrad students um, these days listening, debate, but also presentation skills, um, media, English. In the past I've done teacher training with Korean English teachers. And um, that's my career in Korea. In the States I taught uh, adults, I taught ESL to adults for many years. Yeah. How long have you been in Korea? This is the start of my fourth year here. Mm -hmm. How many Cotisol conferences have you been to? Oh, good question. Maybe four or five. Okay. Yeah. Are, you, are you an active member of Cotisol or just go to the conferences? I'm active. I'm on the Seoul chapter executive, as a okay. matter of fact, yeah. Uh, and what, when you came to this weekend's conference, mm -hmm. anything in particular you were looking for? Any sessions you were uh, especially excited about? Yeah. Um, I was excited about it and have found that my excitement was, was rewarded by going to the sessions um, about the whole concept of global Englishes and the um, connected with that actually, well, I suppose connected. There's the global Englishes and then there's been um, some of the people I've listened to who talked about um, their international research, specifically um, Patricia Duff from the University of British Columbia. I found very, very interesting. She had a information session this morning for people who are looking at pursuing PhDs and I was one of the brave souls who got up at about 6.30 to come and attend that this morning. What time was the session? Eight. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But she was great. Well, I definitely know, probably, recommend her. You want to weed out. If you're going to get your PhD, you have to be prepared for a lot of suffering. Exactly. So you weed, weed them <laughs> exactly. out. Exactly. Um, and well, so what, are you, what uh, kind of PhD are you considering? That's part of why I went to listen to her talk, um, either Applied Linguistics or, or TESOL. Um, my MA is um, Adult Education, and, um, oh, there she goes now. Oh, um, we should grab her. Would you like to speak with her? That would be awesome. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, well, as I was saying a minute ago, this morning I went to Professor Duff's um, information session about um, doctoral programs in TESOL and um, let's see, follow-up questions. Okay, well Jeff asked me a minute ago what specific area I was interested in, not so much specific area, but what the degree would be in. And one thing I had wanted to ask you but didn't have a chance to do earlier is the distinction between um, getting a degree in applied linguistics or language education or TESOL. Could you speak to that a little bit, please? Sure. Thank you. Um, a lot of those distinctions just depend on kind of department convention and they all mean pretty much the same thing. So um, TESOL, apply, ours is called a TESOL program, mm -hmm. but I consider myself an applied linguist. Mm -hmm. So, and most of the others do too, and most of us have applied linguistics PhDs, mm -hmm. but it's called TESOL or modern language education. Um, it just depends on what historically the programs have been called, but I don't think, um, I don't in terms of applying to a program, I don't think that should be the big deal. What might be an issue is if the program's more generic about language and literature education, if there isn't some kind of um, critical mass of, um, of um, talent in the area of TESOL specifically, that would be a problem. But you know, you need some key people in there who are focused on TESOL or applied linguistics. Mm -hmm. But uh, TESOL is often more pedagogical. Mm -hmm. um, applied linguistics is often more linguistic and less pedagogical, less applied actually, so it, th there can be some differences there too. And in some cases, like where I was at UCLA, the master's was called TESOL and the mm -hmm. PhD was applied linguistics. So it's kind of interesting. It's the same people, right, the right. same kind of courses, right. but they kind of positioned the PhD in a way that made it come across more, as more academic, mm -hmm. and indeed, more and the dissertations were highly academic. Master's work was often more um, practical or pedagogical. So, um, anything else? <laughs> anything else? Um, well, let me see. We uh, sorry, just to follow up. If mm -hmm. 
if we saw that someone had a, I mean, if when when it goes to posting job mm -hmm. ads, um, you know, in a department of X and Y, they'll say seeking someone who has a degree in right. language education or TESOL or you know they'll they'll name the areas because they know often it's just it's just a shorthand that has developed for whatever reason mm -hmm. and and um, it, it doesn't necessarily represent very well what the the focus really is within that department. Yeah, I notice actually when I see jobs online, like from the Chronicle uh, of Higher Ed, it'll say um, degree in applied linguistics or closely related field That's and right. so on. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, what do you see as trends? You mentioned this morning about how applicants might need to think about what's going to be happening five years hence in terms of the job market in Canada and the States. Do you think there'll be recovery? <laughs> It's, um, it's hard to know in five years what's going to happen given the emphasis right now on online education, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on cutting costs, on trying to tap into that big international market of students mm -hmm. um, and do it more efficiently for both sides. So it's hard to know. I mean, some of the people at this morning session are expressing interest in online degrees, distance degrees. Mm -hmm. um, so far... There aren't so many of those programs, and I, th I think it's, a, it's early days yet to see mm -hmm. how they will fare. But it, that may be the, the way of the future, um, and that has implications for hiring in five years' time because there, there may be um, fewer people with PhDs of a particular sort needed within the university. They may contract out a lot of this, or right. you know, there may be different ways of delivering even the online side. Right. But um, but with five years from now, I'm pretty sure that a, a number of our faculty will have retired, and it will be the same at many other universities. Just so there will be, they won't all be replaced. Uh, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, but but there will be the need for new people. And in there, Tesla, with within your um, context, with the large number of immigrant um, uh, residents and students and workers, there's always going to be the need for uh, people with expertise in trying to accommodate and integrate and prepare them for, for education or for the workplace. Right. So I think, you know, at least we're in an area where there should be continuing demand because the, the trend is certainly for more immigration rather than less. Right. Unless, you know, and also for even the Generation 1.5 population, so the um, who will need ongoing support for you know, academic writing or whatever. Do we have time for one more? Or do you have time for one I'm more? I'm going to a 11 o'clock session, so I'll probably... What, probably not. One? What's oh. the question? Um, well, you mentioned that there will be demand, um, and I'm wondering about security, actually, because my experience in the States often was being an adjunct at the community college level and those positions would appear and then disappear and appear and disappear and which is why I left the states and came to Korea. Um, do you see with the, with the increase in online more outsourcing um, and less security for it. tenure track faculty and that sort of thing? The union, the faculty associations and unions are very worried about that, right. the, the outsourcing of this kind of distance work right. um, to non-tenure track people. They're right. very worried about that. Um, as long as there are tenure track positions, then there will be some protections. And I, th I think universities, especially if they want to um, prepare doctoral students or master students, they need they need a, a certain core of people there in the university system. Um, but it's hard to know. It's it's a time of considerable change. Yes. I think, in the yes. next Five years as far as higher ed goes, and a lot of soul searching is going on and. Mm -hmm. Um, budgetary issues are looming large, and then the U.S. economy, in your context, mm -hmm. um, is has not recovered. So I think, you know, maybe in five years' time, things will be booming again. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there will always be people needing an education. That's for sure. Yes. Um, the trends are that most people, after they do the first degree, will get, you know, two, three four years of additional education, whether it's vocational or um, academic, um, th th that one degree no longer cuts it. And, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know, so there will always be 
people coming back to get upgrades and be retooled for the right. knowledge economy. Right, right. Hey, I better go. Okay. Nice Thank you so much. You. Okay. <laughs>